Hi. Uh, welcome to the Artcasters, episode 101. Uh, this is basically the weekly vlog where Scott and I talk about art and stuff like that with a rotating third guest. It alternates between our channels. Um, I'm Joshua Kimball. You're on my channel. And I'm here with Scott Circlin. How's it going, everyone? And uh, Scott, where can we find your work? You can find me down here at CircWorks.com, CircWorks on YouTube, uh, Instagram, even though I haven't posted anything in about a week, but I need to get on that. And uh, yeah, just basically CircWorks pretty much anywhere on internet. Nice. And then our uh, other, our special guest uh, today is a good friend of mine, uh, Jim Lujan. And a uh, little short story before I introduce him. Um, I actually first saw Jim's work um, when I was in college as an undergraduate and went to a Spike and Mike's Twisted Animation Festival. And uh, they had a short film of his called Mama and the Thug. And it was hilarious and the music was hilarious. My wife at that time wasn't my wife. And I were driving home and singing Mama and the Thug in the car because it was just hilarious and catchy and amazing. So. Um, Jim's works like all over the place. It's uh, incredible. He's made a ton of animation, and we're here with Jim Lynn Hunt. So, Jim, where can we find your work? With me, you fell in love. Yes, and I, I proposed to her that night. That's the, the catch of that story. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's a, um, on YouTube. You can find my work on YouTube. Um, I'm trying to get. Subscribers, I'm almost there. I'm just about 12 subscribers away or so. So maybe tonight we'll break that record. Um, and then go to jimluhan.com. That's you can watch all my cartoons and stuff there. So, but mainly YouTube and Facebook and MySpace and all that other stuff. Nice. So, um, so yeah, you guys should go help him get over the thousand subscribers. And uh, so. It's well worth it, I would say. His his animations are awesome, so definitely check it out. All you have to do is check it out. Watch watch Cherries in the Snow, and if you don't like that, then I don't know what to tell you, but, because that's like, is that your latest one that's on there? Uh -oh. Funny. And it was originally going to be a, a web series, and then, um, that was too much work, so I turned it into a big movie. So, but that's the late, latest one. I'm working on a new one now, but awesome. that's the very, that's the latest one that's up there, and it's pretty good. Yeah, it's it's actually one of my favorites, and you've got a, he's got tons of them on there. I wasn't I wasn't aware you were do, you've been doing this for that long. I didn't know since Josh was in college, because I mean I first discovered you probably through like big illustration party time or something like that. But well, I, I guess I figure you're probably doing that, but I didn't know you, you were already, you were in Spike and Mike's thing way back then. Yeah, that was the late nineties. Really? Yeah, I started doing uh, that. Mama, I'm a thug was one of the first cartoons that had been in it at all. Um, because when I first started, I was doing animatic cartoons which basically storyboard cartoons. And, um, one of that was probably like my fifth cartoon I ever did. That Mama I'm a Thug, and it got in the Spike and Mike's. That was pretty terrifying and fun. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, I'll the. So is that one on your YouTube channel? If you go way back. Um, yeah, it's it's I. That's the thing. I'm like the for the. I put everything up for free, and um, and just be, I don't, you know, it's the see it. I'm up up there. I need to so if anybody's wanting to make money, talent, right? I think we're getting a bad connection again. That that started to cut out. Um, uh oh. <laughs> oh no. All right. Well, um, I yeah. I mean, like so. Now you've kind of recently released like a full feature length movie, right? Like called Revengeance. You want to want to tell people a little bit about that? Let's see if the audio kind of stays in okay. with us. Do I have? 
Do I have a robot voice right now, or am I not? Okay? Not right this second. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, I'll talk. I'll say everything in shorthand, just in case we cut out. We make move. Bill and famous cartoonist. Much fun. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to be talking to caveman Jim Lu Han <laughs> all day. Um, yeah, uh, uh, so you made revenge. I, I hope, like, hopefully the audio is going to, like, fill in a little bit. But if not, we might have to kind of log out, log back in and see how it goes. Uh -huh. um, so with Revengeance, um, like, you know, you basically made that with Bill Clinton, which is kind of a... Um, like an Oscar-nominated uh, animator. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about how that kind of came to be? Yeah, I'm, I'm curious because I, I have to imagine that you're a pretty big Clinton fan to begin with, and for him to, like, call you, I know you probably had interaction with him before, but for him to call you and say, I want to do a film with you, when he's never done anything like that before. I don't think he's ever, he's done everything on his own. And for him to be, for you to be the first one to him reach out and say, you want to partner up. I mean, that's gotta be, that's gotta be everyone's like dream come true. I mean, everyone has their own, like, you know, their own person that they kind of look up to or whatever. But for that person to call you and say, hey, I want to do a project with you. I mean, that's just amazing. I mean, you, I can't imagine what you felt when that happened. Okay. Just keep going. <laughs> uh, yes, it was surreal is the best way I could. Very surreal, very, very um, was this really happening? Every step of the way is like, okay, is it still going to happen? Is it still happening? You know? um, yeah, it was, it was the best scenario I could ever ask for. It was really, really cool. And it was a lot of fun. So, I mean, I enjoyed it. I made sure to enjoy it because I didn't know. I mean, um, you know, it was so good that I was like, okay, this is going to fall. The, the floor is going to fall through at any minute, you know. It just it was very organic. It was a very, very organic process. How's, I just want to know how my voice is now. We, we, could, we could hear most of that, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, it's much better. Damn it. But I don't know if you want to kind of, if there's more to tell about that, or if you want to get go into kind of what Revengeance is about, or you know. Um. Yeah. Sure. Um. It is a biker, an animated, fully animated, full length biker uh, revenge comedy tale, um, and designed the characters and voiced a lot of it, and then did the music for it. And then Bill animated it and drew it on Bill Plimpton film. Um, kind of, he kind of did it in a hybrid style, kind of both of our styles mixed. So that's very surreal. Yeah, too, not mine. And uh, yeah, it was really bizarre. It's um, it's almost like if you one, you just see a mermaid. And, and and Bill Plimpton was my mermaid. Uh, <laughs> uh, if you can hear me, you can get me on that. So so like with uh, with animation and getting into animation and stuff, like we were kind of talking about this a little earlier today, but like um, so like you are pretty prolific. You put out a lot of work. And I was just kind of curious if you could kind of get into a little bit of like um, some of the thinking process. Like, first off, like why animation? Like, I, the reason I'm asking that is because it's like, um, like Scott and I do comics. Comic books are insanely time consuming, and then animation is just like I, I imagine. I imagine animating something and it makes me feel anxiety just because of the amount of work that goes into it. And even uh, Corey is in the chats, like he's delved in animation. And just 
dipped in thinking, oh, I'll make a, a long film. And, you know, I think five minutes took forever for him. And it's just like, it's, it's a time consuming process. What, like, what drew you to it? Like, how did you end up in it? And like, what makes you keep doing it? Because it's, it's, it's so, it's such a crazy process, you know? Um, it was a way to combine um, film, you know, do, directing film and in comics, you know, the whole, all that stuff. It was a way to combine all of that stuff and to actually get a vision of a movie. Product exactly the way you picture it, in your, to, as you picture it in your head as possible. So I think that's why I went into, into that. Because, I mean, at first, I think when I think I should, and I didn't because it's such a pain in the butt uh, getting everybody together. Yeah. I think that's kind of why it, it's fun to, to just be able to create your whole movie in, in your room in the, in the house. Yeah, that's that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, that is like kind of the cool thing about your animations is that like they're completely self authored. So it's like, um, especially like even the early ones, it's like you did all the voices, all the music, all the editing, all the drawing, basically like the whole thing. And but but what's interesting is like there's not, from what I understand, it doesn't seem like there's a lot of animators, as as many animators doing that, taking on like the whole thing, <laughs> you know. Um, yeah. A lot of collaborative, you know, but you do like a, a, a huge chunk of it. Um, so, like, that's that's kind of interesting, the control thing, like controlling it, being able to see it from the beginning to the end. That's that's a that's kind of a rad thing, you know. <laughs> yeah. Am I is my signal okay? Because I think you were cutting out, but I heard you. You're good. Yeah. Okay, so, so you can tell if it's okay. Boy, <laughs> technology. I know. Um, um, at first, all of that stuff, all doing everything, doing the voices and stuff, and the drawing, all that, that was just really out of necessity because, I mean, um, there were, I didn't have anybody to make these films with. I really genuinely and do want to... Like it's fun to make them. It's it feels like a good release. But I mean, I'm not. I do not like to be dependent on other people to in order to accomplish, you know, um, a creative goal. Um, I think it's very frustrating when have a project in mind and it's held up because of. X, Y, Z, or whatever. I think that's really why I never got into live action at first. Um, I think this was a way for me to to really, um, like, I mean, that's how I got, like, a body of work done, because it was just me at first. Now, nowadays, I like, that's the, nowadays, like, the new thing that I really like in the last few years is I like getting other people involved. Um, and, and casting people in films and things like that. So I'm just looking at the live chat here too. Yes. Yeah, so um, let's see. So I think that um. I think that's a pretty pretty interesting like reason to get into things, but I but I at the same time it's like I kind of think that it seems like a thread across the board with like most artists I know who get into like cartooning or animation. Like some of it, a lot of it will just be out of necessity, like having a story you want to tell and like, hey, I can do it. You <laughs> know, like I can do the whole thing and kind of figuring it out as you go. You know. Um, so like, so what are you like? What do you want? To, like, what have you been working on since Revengeance? And then like, 
Um, like, what would you recommend people kind of check out? Like, what would you recommend for somebody who's just introduced to Jim Lujan, like on your YouTube channel? What should they check out? Um, probably go to my, I have a playlist on my YouTube channel. Um, let's see what it's called. Uh, all, let me go to my blindingly fast internet here. Hang on. <laughs> Okay. If you go to my YouTube channel, Jim Lujan Animation, and if you look at the playlists, oh, here we go. Just called Jim Lujan Animation, funnily enough, the playlist. And I put kind of a greatest hits in the order as if somebody's watching my stuff for the first time. It's got all kinds of good starter cartoons. Um, I would say Prince of Pomona is a good one to first look at. Freak Daddy. A few of them. John Henry Unicorn, Bobby Churro. Lots of, I don't know. There's so much. There's too much to. I think you would die if you try to binge watch it. <laughs> you would literally die of starvation. And sure. That's a challenge. So I, I think everybody should go and binge watch it. But yeah, um, I, my, one of my personal favorites is John Henry Unicorn. That's a, that's a really good one. Um, the Unicornian Church is, is pretty compelling <laughs> for you guys to check out. Yeah. Um, yeah, so like, so we were kind of talking about like a little bit about just kind of like conceiving ideas like earlier today. and. It, I kind of wanted to touch on that a little bit um, because I've, it's been kind of fresh on my mind. I was talking to another cartoonist over the weekend about um, they have to develop bits for like one panel strips, and they were talking about like the process for creating these these bits, like humor and uh, and like crafting jokes. And it just got me thinking because I was like, I wonder what Jim's like thing is. To kind of come up with bits, you know, um, because like you come up with like insanely unique ideas, and you're you're, I, you know, when we hang out and stuff, you're a funny guy in person, but like you come up with like these really off the wall plots and really like kind of um, I, I don't know, it's a very specific kind of feel to your work, and it's it's one of those things where I was wondering like what your process is when like so like, when you have an idea, where do you take it from idea to kind of making it so funny? <laughs> um, I mean, or is it just naturally funny? It's just, uh, you know, does that make sense as a question? <laughs> um, I think I'm a weirdo, so. <laughs> um, I don't know, I just, I think I have a weird sense of humor, probably that's where it stems from. Um, an inappropriate, uh, yeah. You no, know, I just try to think of things or things pop up that make, and I start from there. So uh, it's usually something unusual, and then I'll kind of document that idea. Or usually, um, sometimes I just it's something that a few years, and I eventually end up using it. Um, Example, um, in, there's a, a cartoon I did called, and there's a scene where these two gangsters pull guns on each other. The foreground, of the, and uh, he is on the turntables. He's a DJ behind them, and he tells them, you know, hey, 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 you know, like break it up, basically. And he says, you know, are you guys here to fight? And then they just look at each other and they go, dance. So he goes, dance, I said, dance. And then they start dancing because he starts playing a beat. Well, that line is from a salt and pepper song. Salt and pepper I, from Push I, It. There's a scene where. I was going to say, Jim, I noticed, it's, and maybe I'm just reading too much into this, but I noticed with a lot of your stuff that it seems like you do drop a lot of song stuff, songs in there. Like there was one, I forget, forget which one, but it seems like you dropped like two Rolling Stones lyrics in there. 
Do you, I don't, I'm trying to. I, yeah, I, I kind of. Street I, Fighting Man was one of them. <laughs> and then there was another one. I forgot. It was another line from a Rolling Stone song. And then this, I may be really reading into it, but in Cherries from the Snow, did you purposely drop in some expose songs in there, or is that just me, or is it just coincidence? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, that's not. That's... I don't know. How, I'm probably the only one that even caught that, but I'm listening. Even the music, I'm kind of listening. That sounds kind of like expose, that, that R&B group from the, from the 90s. And then he said, "You said yeah, something about yeah. seasons yeah. change and point of no return." I'm going, yeah, "Is that just coincidence?" That's it. That's, <laughs> no, that's so absolutely. awesome. Yeah, I, I I like to throw in stuff like that. It's entertaining to me. <laughs> um, it's, that's all intentional, and it's I love it when into my stuff. That's fine. That's because you'll find things in it a lot of times that I. I don't even see in it, and I'll be like, "Oh yeah, I meant to do that." No, but the music stuff's on purpose, like, like a lot, of, a lot of lines from different songs and things like that. I'm a big music fan, so that that's where that. Comes. But that is that's you're the first person to bring that up. I like that. <laughs> it is because I'm like a big music trivia guy and everything. Sorry, my printer decides it's going to clean itself, so it's probably making a bunch of noise, but. Um, but yeah, it's it's just all these little things in there, and I, there's tons of them if you if you pay attention. There's tons of that stuff, and I, I, I mean, and especially like the original music that you that you write. I was curious, do you? Because sometimes there'll just be a snippet of a song that you wrote, and I'm wondering, do you write out the whole songs? Are those whole songs like available? Do you ever make like a CD, or do you just write the part that you need for the animation? It's usually they're all whole full songs. Um, they're just usually on in my computer or whatever. I, some of it I've posted. Um, if you search the internet, a podcast called oh, yeah. um, So it's like fake explosion. I put a radio show out and it was um, all collection of all of my music from the movies. Some of it was like, get, like Kevin Cross. I played some of his music on, on that. Music from my friends, but ninety percent of it's music that I created and music from the movies. And I think from the very get-go, when I first started doing animation, I think that's I started assembling and collecting music pieces that I just wrote. Um, what I don't do, you know, it's funny. What I don't do, and score my music, like I don't score for a particular scene. I, I never sit there and write and go, okay, the music's going to swell here and then it's going to fade here. But what I do sometimes is I'll think atmosphere or, okay, they're going to be in a bar. So if I don't already have something from years of record, I've got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of songs. If I don't have something, then I'll create something. But I never look at the, at the video while I'm doing the music. I always just go away and the music sometimes like I'll, I'll have a piece of music and then edit to it like I, I don't score it like a film where I'm looking at it and going you know dun 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 <laughs> the, the mouth, the mouth, probably my least favorite thing. We could hire some kid to do all mouth movements. That's that's that one of the good. reasons why I don't. Anim I mean, I just the, you know, I've done animation in the past just for clients and things like that. Uh, just mostly just flash animation, and it's I love the end result, but I just don't like the process of doing it. But of course, that was like more corporate stuff, and I've I've done some fun stuff, but not like I mean. Your stuff, I mean... Okay, so so Gazbot, Gazbot says that my audio keeps cutting out. Is it cutting out for you? Yeah, you guys yeah. We're, we're just kind of pushing through it, Gaz. Yeah, we apologize, but, you know, it's um, it's it's just kind of the connection we got. So we're, 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 we're getting some good information in between when it's cutting out. So we're, I think we're just going to have to roll with it. Yeah. So, yeah, but we're aware. Huh. I wonder if I switch rooms, if that'll help. I don't think 
I'm mobile. Uh-huh. If you if you want to try it, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. Josh and I will kind of try to carry that conversation. Right. I'm so I'm um, moving around. If if worst case scenario, it's like a Blair Witch Project kind of thing. Yeah, <laughs> kind of awesome. It's kind of sucks because I, I I've got so many questions and then some of it. I mean, I'm giving the answers. I think more or less, but it's just it's hard. It's you know, but I think it's. I'd rather we got. All right, let me move the cuts out. Sorry, Jim. Go ahead. Can you hear me now? Let me know if it cuts out anymore. We we can hear you now. Whether it cuts out in the future, I don't know. We'll find out. Because I'm in this. I'm in the same room as the router now. Oh, that actually that seems to be working. So yeah, well. I think that might be our. Okay. <laughs> maybe the <laughs> between the router and the kitchen, maybe yeah. maybe that was the problem. Yeah. I, uh, anyways, I hope it works. Let me know in the chat room. Let it me know seems it like works. it's it seems like it's okay now. So. Okay, let's start everything over. So yeah, so I don't know if you. I, I, I had a, I had a couple questions. I, I was curious, unless we want to talk more about music, if there's anything else you want to say about music, and of course we can loop around back oh. to that too, since we can hear you now. But um, I, but I was I'll curious. Love to talk about about. Sorry, we kind of cut out. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I, so I just had a question uh, about characters and where your characters come from. Oof. Um, anywhere, actually. Um, I a lot of times sketches that I just do. Um, sketching one thing or another, I might accidentally draw something and go, "Oh, that looks like that." And then sometimes they're just. I have an idea for a character. They never come from voices, though. Oh, they do. That's what, that was going to be my next question. Oh, no, no. I usually don't. That's usually not the case. It, I might have done that maybe once or twice, but, you know, usually it's I'll, I'll draw something. Oh, that would make a great character. Or sometimes it's an accidental drawing. Sometimes it's I'll draw. A uh, background character. That's actually one thing. I tons and tons and tons of background characters. I've got hundreds and hundreds of background characters stockpiled. Background for different scenes, so I don't have to redraw them. So do you? I mean, do you kind of consider your animation sort of this shared universe? Because sometimes I'll notice some characters will kind of go into other shorts. Have you kind of? Consider those each one is a separate thing. Oh, uh, yeah. Everybody in, in my cartoons is within this. Um, I totally uh, bit that from Tarantino. You know. So, and George, well, yeah, Tarantino. Um, I think it's really interesting that um, a character might appear in the background or, or inconsequentially I guess in in one cartoon and then be the star of another the next cartoon yeah. so yeah, yeah. I, I, I right now is, is is a case of that too dipping back into my old catalog and uh, using some stuff yeah one of the things I notice about your characters is like your central characters in each short or, or film or whatever they usually don't fare very well. They usually end up catch like catching a beating or get thrown in jail or <laughs> I don't know if it's, it's if it's for you it's more like a cautionary tale or <laughs> you know what was a big influence on my work was <laughs> dick tracks. Those yeah. the, those little biblical, you know, the little jack tick tracks that they would leave in your windshield or whatever. Oh okay. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's a big influence on me from the moment I started doing cartoons. I'm like, oh, they're great because there's like, I used to have like a sort of a auto. Like my cartoons were about shady people doing dirty deeds, getting the. That was my formula for every cartoon, you know. And so I've, I've, experimented with different that but that's usually it that's usually yeah. it 
And one thing too, um, I find that side characters are usually the most interesting too. You know, not not the handsome lead character in a movie. I like the the henchman's right hand man is more interesting to me than the lead character. But even like your lead characters, they're typically not your normal like. They're I wouldn't even call them like protagonists, even in their own story. Most of them, they just kind of I don't know. They just kind of following oh, this yeah, like, yeah. person that's you know. <laughs> Yeah, I, I've gotten so used to it now. <laughs> like, oh, oh, yeah, this hero of my film is a weirdo. I don't even, it's just like, it's normal to me now. Um, for me to design like a regular hero, like what you, your standard Tom Cruise guy. Um, yeah, that would be bizarre. Um, I, it's, to me, it's more fun. To me, it's more fun to have, like, and that's become a thing, I think, with me. It's a thing. Well, and I it's like, totally go ahead. Sorry. Well, I like, I like strange characters. They're fun to play with, and I, I think that's what makes your 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 animation so unique because it, they do you know they definitely can. It's it's you got a unique style, not just with the artwork, but also the storytelling and the voices, and it's just you know when you look at it, it's just it's just you, and you I mean. And the more you put out, I mean, it's just like, you know, I don't, I don't know how to explain it, but it's, it's just, you know, just this original universe that you've created. Yeah, thank you, Scott. Um, like, I don't know, I would say to every animator or potential animator, I would say just play to your strengths. That's a big thing. Um, and to me, that was my strength, like this whole kind of like shared universe. Um, I'm trying to coin the phrase "luniverse," but I keep forgetting <laughs> to say awesome. it. That's awesome. That's awesome. I don't. You, yeah, I don't use it, and I need to start using it more because uh, since the beginning, like towards, I thought I'm going to start marketing it as the luniverse, and I just never did. I forgot to do it. <laughs> so I guess it's not too late to do it now. It's much better than Ghettomation. I found I dropped Ghettomation after a couple of years because I'm like, uh, it's the world's becoming more, more PC, so I probably didn't really want to fight. It wasn't important to me. So, um, but and plus, I wanted to start using my own name too. Yeah. No, I really I like that okay. idea. But yeah, the universe, I guess you could say. Sorry. All right. that, that also comes from uh, Looney Tunes, uh, having a shared universe, because Bugs Bunny lives in, in Yosemite Sam's universe, and Yosemite Sam lives in the same universe as Grandma from Sylvester, you know, so they all, you know, they have, all eat have in they the ever same has, do you, To your knowledge, has Looney Tunes ever described themselves as Looneyverse? I wouldn't be spelled different, obviously, but... I'm just curious, like, because if they haven't, yeah, I mean, I would definitely run with that for you. Hey, so I'm just wondering also, I'm with the chat folks. Corey said, we can't hear anything until it goes live. Oh. Don't know what that, don't I know don't what that means. I don't either. I don't know, Corey, if you can expand on that. Well, Obviously, well, maybe they're not hearing us. No, but Gaz responded to something we said. Thanks for trying. Huh. I can't hear. I, yeah, I don't know, man. That's this kind of sucks. But <laughs> yeah, that's too bad. I'm wondering. I'm wondering. Gaz says he doesn't know what that means either. So maybe that's different from different people. Yeah, man. The internet's on insane today. Well, um, oh man, should we keep? Trucking forward, or yeah, I, I mean, it's like I, I definitely like to have Jim on again, and hopefully under better scenarios. But I, I figured just, just push through it since we've got him here. If he doesn't mind, I mean, yeah, uh, no, I, don't, I don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, um, Jim, like, do you want to explain a little bit? Because, like, so I, I met you through 
um, I think Javier like years ago, and then and then got to know you better through VIPT and Kevin. And, but uh, now we do this thing called Clam. And do you want to touch on that, like what we kind of do and why it's important, <laughs> kind of that kind of thing? Yeah. Clam. You know, that were Cabrera, Lujan, and Millsap. And it was uh, Jose Cabrera, Macho Man, uh, Lujan, who is me, uh, and Lonnie Millsap, who does a strip called Bacon. Isn't it called Bacon Strip? I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, three of us would meet once a month, and uh, we would kind of go over creative stuff. And and it was just like a, a thing that went on for months and months and months. And it was really helpful to all three of us. Like it really made a big difference creatively um, at the camp meeting, which was yet as carefully. Because if you say, I'm going to a clam meeting, it's, <laughs> you know, you know, kind of weird. But, um, and then it started expanding to um, more people started showing up and got bigger and bigger. And I mean, I think the biggest meeting that we've had, one time we had like 15 people are in it, some you know, five, six artists usually. Uh, but we get together once a month, usually at, at Cantor's Dally and in Hollywood, but like sometimes we do do pars in Pasadena. Um, but it's great. It's really it's just a, a way for e originally it was set up a way for Jose, Lonnie, and myself to keep each other in check, or creatively. Like we'd say, set a goal, and then the next month we knew we had to like come back and say, "Hey." <laughs> um, but now it's kind of it's more like a social networking thing between artists and um, really good. It's been really, I mean, there's been some good connections made. Uh, Doug Bresler, an animator, he's part of it. Ken Mora, it's a few other folks. Rody Motijo, uh, really good. It's been really, really a fun thing. The more people we have involved though, the harder it is to actually deep but it's always because the networking is really good when you have a lot of people. There's a lot of stuff. Um, it still hasn't helped me get a thousand subscribers. <laughs> so uh, very angry. if you guys want to hear Jim in like full clarity, you should subscribe to his channel. That'll, that'll get you to a thousand, hopefully. <laughs> no, um, uh, but, um, but the like the, the thing that I like about Clam is that it is smaller and like I tend to like the, the meetings we have that are a little more intimate because it is cool and, and it's like kind of like um, it's been very helpful to me to, to be going to that because it does keep me accountable to be making stuff because I'm going to hang out with a bunch of other artists, you know, so I got to have something to talk about. And then aside from that, like um, it, it's encouraging because it's like it's a it seems like the one thread that ties everybody together there is it's people who are making their own stuff. And so like, to me, I think that's, that's kind of important, especially like for me in my day job, I, you know, I'm around a lot of people who aren't making personal projects, you know? And so when, when I'm like, when I do like a clan meeting and I'm hanging out with a bunch of people clan with an M, <laughs> um, you know, it's it's super encouraging and exciting, and it gets you invigorated with your own work. At least for me. Um, and so, like, I think for anybody who's an artist or an illustrator, like, you know, especially with doing stuff like what Jim's doing, or I'm doing, where it's like you're sitting a lot of the time in isolation. You know, making art. Um, it, it's good to have things like that, where you're like kind of actually surrounding yourself with other creative people. Um, cause it, it's, you know, it, it helps keep the, the juices flowing and like kind of keep, keep the work going, you know? Um, but you know, cause I, cause I've had years where I didn't do stuff like that and it was really detrimental to my productivity because I just, you know, it's like, you'll get in this kind of mode of like, well, who cares what I'm doing, <laughs> you know? 
Um, and it, so it's been, I don't know, I, I, I find that really um, awesome that, that you guys organize that thing. And, um, it's, it's I mean, it, 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 to me, it stems from being a kid and magazine and the usual gang of idiots, you know, you'd see us hang out, going on trips together and stuff like that. Um, and for me, I, I a sense of like a healthy sense of competition that kind of keeps you on your toes. And when I say competition, I mean I mean that's internal because yeah. up and say, look, I've accomplished something. That's one factor. Um, the other factor is also uh, therapeutic because you go there and you go, hey guys, I'm going crazy. I'm literally. Can you help me? And then they usually laugh at you. <laughs> but uh, it it's a it's an all around good thing, and it's been very helpful. And there have been um, benefits of doing this for the for the people involved because um, connections, in, uh, professional connections too, like somebody. Uh, about hey, you should contact my friend so and so, you know, and, and so and so has helped them do such and such. So and so has been very helpful with such and such. Yeah, so and so is a good view. That so and so is great, <laughs> you know. But I, I would recommend. Sorry, <laughs> I was just gonna say I would recommend because we used to do the same thing. We created a like a, a networking group a, through Meetup or whatever, and I don't know if Meetup's still a thing or not. Um, but if if you you know, it's it's not a bad idea to start something like that up. If you know, just try to find like-minded people and, and try to do that because we did that for a while and it was super fun and I miss it because it kind of eventually it sort of fell apart. But we had it going for a good couple of years. So how long have you guys been doing Clam then? Oh man, well, Lonnie and Jose and I have been doing it for about four years, probably five oh, years. Cool. I don't know. Wow. Yeah, what's going oh, on? That's cool. A while to people in. Yeah, that's cool. And uh, you, you guys are kind of doing that too. I mean, you guys have your own online, virtually, but it, it's different. I mean, it, if you can't do it in person, do it virtually. But but if you can do it in person, I would I would recommend that. Oh, absolutely, yeah. I mean, that's if you've got a local group of artists. It can be, it's also very um, specific to the art, like, because you know when you, your mom and dad told you you are who you hang out with, that type of thing. It's true for artists, too, because if you, if you've got a bunch of lazy artists together, then that, that would probably be... Uh, but if you have a group group of that that was the thing. Anybody that we kind of brought into the circle had to be somebody that was really um, uh, motivated and really serious, but at the same time had a sense of humor. It's all about like we were done at the bottom line was it wasn't about just talking about process. It was about actually done. I mean, and, and that was an unspoken thing, Jose and I. Like, we just, we knew that we wanted to get certain things done. It wasn't about just meeting and just breathe to, to advance our careers or advance our goals or our agendas <laughs> or whatever. Um, it was really helpful. I mean, I, um, revengeance um, happened all during Clam. Like I got a lot of good from those guys too during that. Yeah, I mean, I think um, it, it, it it is kind of a unique thing because a lot of those art meetups that I would go to, um, there would be kind of a lot of people who were just there to kind of network and that was it. And maybe, you know, like you had it, a, a mix of people who weren't productive and 
are productive and um, to me like the cool thing about clan is the fact that like like literally everybody who shows up is like serious like really wants to do work you know and then aside from that like it's also super supportive group so it's not like um, you know a lot of a lot of our groups where it's like kind of there's so much like dog eat dog kind of stuff going on that it that it's not really a, a place to be if like let's say you just have a crappy week you know and you're not making art or something it's like I, I think um, I think it's a, a really good mix it's a good group of people so well, we um, um you when you're not there Josh so I <laughs> that's okay I'm, I'm hardly ever not there now. <laughs> True. Keep from talking about okay. it. <laughs> <laughs> That's why Josh goes, because he's like, you better not be talking about me. Yeah, I pretty much show up in a leather jacket. Like, hey! You know, you know <laughs> before art casters existed, um, Kevin and I have these long phone calls with each other where we did a very similar thing that you guys were doing online before clan ever exists. Uh, we would, Kevin and I used to have these really deep art conversations or motivational things or, you know, um, and uh, so it's important to come down too and, uh, and, and, Get to meet some of the folks down here. Um, hey, Scott. Yes. By the way, are you? What city are you? I'm in. I'm in Phoenix. Oh, and that reminds me. So, um, Revengeance have, has it shown in Phoenix yet, or did I miss it, or will it, or when? If it doesn't, when will it be available for me to see, to like purchase or whatever? It is. We are speaking with a distributor as we, as we speak. Uh, for it. My goal was to get it on Netflix, like, but Bill wants to show it in theaters as well, like select theaters. And it is playing in Tucson later this year for sure. Okay. Well, I, I go to Tucson every once in a while, so. Fam family in Tucson. Hey, hey, family. Okay. Um, <laughs> But, uh, and I love to stop at the Whataburger in Phoenix, by the way. It's fantastic. There's a few of them, yeah. And now we got in and out of that place, so. Uh, oh. um, but Re Revengeance it will be some select theaters later this year in the United States. There's not much of the year left, so they better hurry up. Um, but like I said, my was I wanted it on Netflix or Amazon or something like that, like a platform people could see all over the place, all over. I think that it's a perfect movie for that. Or HBO, wouldn't that be nice? Um, but I will shout it from the mountaintops the minute it is available for viewing in different cities. Awesome. Um, right now they're, just, they're still doing the festival circuits right now. It's gonna be at Woodstock. It's a big festival. So we got accepted into that. We're really happy about that. Um, Scott, it's very easy to see it. You just got to either go to France, <laughs> New York, Armenia, Sweden, Italy, Spain, or a number of other local places. Very easy to get to. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. I think Tucson is my best bet so far. <laughs> Tucson has really good Mexican food too. So. Wait, well, we have pretty good Mexican food all over here, so. But yeah, there's. I forgot, I forgot what that one there. I did go to a Mexican restaurant in Tucson. I forgot what it was called, but um, it was really good. Yeah. Let's go to my cousin's house. <laughs> all right, I'll look them up. <laughs> they have really good food. So, but yeah, that's. I mean, it's funny. Um, I was just talking with somebody about that the other day. It's like. Uh, the business side of Revengeance, and when I say the business side, I mean screening and stuff has been, it has been out of my wheelhouse. It's like I haven't been setting up screenings because civil circuit with it. And 
behind the scenes that's going on. Like you can't play it in this place because it's going to play in this place first, and it, you have to play it in this place in order for it to play to qualify for this place. There's a lot of that weird festival stuff going on. Mm -hmm. So, um, but we're kind of coming to the end of that a little bit. So it, we have a lot more freedom now to book it. We want to get an LA screening for a week out here um, before the end of the year. They're really pretty sure they're going to do that at least. And then, like I said, um, so much easier for people to see it if it was just like on Netflix. I, I always say that though, but we'll see what happens. So, well, I, so I would imagine that's probably in the cards. It's you know, but usually, like I mean, they do try to premiere it and run festivals and things like that first. I think. So, have you learned anything really? Weird thing with Revengeance, uh -huh. um, it's so different than I normally operate because I normally shoot. Man, I'm usually on the next project even before I finish the current one. Like I'm usually back to back and then jumping on the next thing and then jumping. With Revengeance, it's been done for so long. We um promoting and like it's you know it's been such a and it's just a natural way that. But there's been just so much like like delay and delay and delay and wait wait and wait and wait on it, you know. So is that like a, a like have you learned anything like from the process that you can apply to your own personal things, like to like getting into festivals and running that circuit, or is it um, is it still kind of a mystery, or are you kind of starting to decode it a little bit? I don't know. To me, that a lot of that sounds like just mind blowing. Like just the amount of work. Kind of. I mean, I got to see how it, it's really like how it how it's done on a higher, bigger level, and that's kind of exciting. Uh, I like that. The other thing, lesson this is though, has taught me um, being an independent head animator. You really have to celebrate the independence part of it, like. Like it's made me appreciate I have to do whatever I want. So there's a trade-off because you can have the free, like me, you can have the freedom to do whatever you want, create any kind of movie you want, want. but at the same time you're trading the numbers, like the audience that sees it. Because the yeah. audience that sees a Revenge is much bigger than the audience that sees a Jim Lujan solo card. It's just like music. It's just like music. Um, being on a label or being a guy who just puts out stuff directly on the internet, you know? Yeah. Uh, you have 100% freedom on one of them, and the other one, you have a lot of freedom, but you're playing by somebody else's rules a little bit. They both have pluses to them. It, it has made me appreciate being free. You know, a lot more than I ever did. Yeah, because I'm mean, I, I can. Uh, it must be nice to be like from that experience of like that things being like things being taking a long time, a long time, and now I'm getting slapped. Now I'm getting slapped on volume. But uh, it must be nice um, to get like that freedom after like going through this like long process with a with a big feature film. You know. Um, to where you can like literally animate something, pop it up on YouTube, and get feedback like immediately, <laughs> you know? Um, yeah. That must be nice to be able to kind of yeah. switch between. What I wanted to do is, I uh, we talked about like growing and stuff. I'm just, you know, spinning the same wheel every time I create something. So uh, I did want to learn something new from the process. But um, but like I said, it has made me appreciate and value uh, creative freedom and and you know the way I've always done things. So yeah. So if you're an independent creator, take advantage of it. You know, be independent and do what you want. Um, that's the trick, though. You know. The trick has always been want to be self 
indulgent or do you want to play for the audience? Middle ground, that's gold, you know. Yeah. But uh, but it's fun to be self-indulgent, though. <laughs> I, I think it is, it's interesting to me because that, um, that's something I, I feel like it took me a long time to kind of learn, even on my own personal projects. I feel like up until this one I'm working on, I, I had been kind of trying to kind of cater to what other people would like or hit some arbitrary deadline. And, um, and I, even on my personal work, I just end up kind of like, well, this is good, but I would never feel like, yeah, that was something awesome, you know? So it, it took me like 15 years to get there with my own personal work, where now I'm, I'm working on something where I'm like, I'm making something good, and if, if people don't like it, great. If they do like it, that would be really awesome. But it, 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 it is interesting because it's like, um, I don't know, it, it's kind of, I, I think like you've had a voice for a much longer time than I have with your art, and I think that, um, I mean, I think that's, you know, I think that's inevitably going to kind of end up uh, at least with a body of work you're happy with, you know, which is, which is good, because a lot of times when you're placating other people, you don't end up with work you're happy with, you know, like, uh, I, one of the things I'm learning, and I learned this from working with Bill Plimpton, is that um, it's been helpful for me, and it's going to be helpful for me, is to this and I, I'm trying to think of a, a better word for exploit. So, um, in other words, when I finish a project, uh, usually I done with one. I'm already starting another, and, and it's always been like that, one after another after another, and they kind of slow down sometimes and go back and um, acquaint the audience with your previous work and re-examine it and and just put it out light sometimes uh, because it's always going to be somebody's first time seeing your stuff. Yeah. So I'm kind of starting to do that now. I'm thinking of doing some little mini um, trees or whatever on some of the car cartoons, or, or I'm, I'm thinking of doing some kind of some another way to promote the, the my earlier work so that people can kind of get into that and 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 um, be a little bit more attentive to the older stuff. Yeah. That's a habit that I never had before. I, I never looked back. I, I would always do stuff and then just keep running with it. But uh, I mean, the, the creative bug is still alive within me. I don't think it's ever going to get it. Has the, has the partnership uh, with Bill Plimpton, has that like open door, open other doors to you or brought more? I, I, it has to have brought more like eyes onto your projects and what you do I would imagine right internationally it has like there's I I get more international inquiries and stuff that's been great um, and I think like what we were saying earlier is the more when we get distribution or it's it I think that it, it'll increase even more so um, you know it's kind of tricky for me too because I I am, there was a time where I wanted to be a freelance animator, music videos, animated music videos, and animated commercials, and I kind of dabbled in that for a while. I, the, the further I've, I've come along, the more I realize, like, internally, I don't want to do that. I, like, the animation energy that I have is just enough to make these little films, and, and they're my passion. And I don't really have the energy to work on, you know, music for the most part, music yeah. videos and things like that. That's what I was going to ask. Like I said, it, it, it wasn't fun. I mean, it wasn't as, it's, 
videos I did are an exception because I did them with counter. They were my friends. They're a group that's actually my friends that, or became friends with them. And and that was more, I had complete artistic freedom with those. They, I could do, they said, do whatever, we're fans. And so that was a unique situation. Um, for hire, I've done um, some things like that. And it's just like, I don't know, man. The, the amount of money that I made doing that, it's like, if I just did that, that only had be pretty much on a Nah, it's not worth it. I'll just, I'll do my own stuff. Even if no money's coming in, I can uh, zero. I'm doing them for me. I'm doing the, the films for me. And I know they inspire other people. You know, I've been told that. And I like that. Because I, I know how it feels. Because I knew people all the time. In fact, I'm kind of famous for discovering new people that have been around for like 30 years. So I always think that I discovered like, oh, I discovered this new artist. Um, Josh and I, our, our mutual fan, friend, Dave Baker, always makes fun of me for that. Do you know what? I discovered this artist. His name's Benjamin Mara. And <laughs> he's really, you got to check out his stuff. It's stuff. And he's like, you idiot. This guy's been famous for, you know, longer than you. It's like, and, but that's okay, because um, I know how it feels to be inspired by other artists. So I know that once in a while people come across my stuff and they dive into my, because I get emails and they're like, oh my God, and then they ask me kind of the same things we're talking about tonight. So I know it makes, it's making a difference. I know, like I said, I know it's true because I've done that with other people. I just discovered an artist named Eric Powers. He's a paper mache or, or he's a stop animation uh, animator. Like paper cutout animation. Uh, if you, Eric Powers, Path of, of Blood. It's really, he's really, really, really good. Like amazing. And he's done a feature film. And speaking of, speaking of amazing animators, um, I wanted to get your guys' opinion on something. And if anybody could hear me in the chat. Like, uh, I've had such a good time doing longer animations lately in the last couple of years. I've done a 20 minute one, I've done a couple of 15 minute ones. But um, I, I'm always curious to what the audience or people that like my stuff how they feel about those. I mean, I've gotten good feedback and I enjoy doing them and I'm thinking of doing more. This earlier today, it's like, it's kind of like all or nothing. Either I want to do really short animations or really, really long animations. Like, that's kind of like my thing now. Like, 10 minute animations or 30 minute animations, you know, just. It's, it's funny because. Like my, I've seen so many, you know, I've seen so many times where people do shorts and then they do a long form and it just doesn't, it doesn't work. I don't know if that's, the, I don't think that's the case with yours because like uh, the cherries from the snow, that, that, that one's a lot, that one's longer. And I think that's one of my favorites that you've done. Um, I mean, it's right up there. Yeah. yeah. So, but I mean, I, I know you did I another. Because it works. Yeah. I know you did another long form one and it was sort of a partnership. Um, and I, I, I just, to me, that one didn't didn't resonate with me because it didn't seem as much your humor. It seemed more like it was the the people you're doing it with, even though it was your you know animation and everything. Um, so I don't know. As long as it's your stuff, I mean, so far, I mean, I I, I like the the longer form stuff too. But I wouldn't want you to stop doing the short. I guess it would just depend on the story you want to tell. Some stories need that you need to take longer to tell. Yeah, I, I agree, know. Scott. I completely agree. Or, you know, and I don't know if you've done this before in the past. It looks like maybe you have or, like, um, but, like, because some of some of them, like, what's, uh, I think John Henry, Henry Unicorn kind of has sequels, so you can kind of string those together and then make a longer one. So I don't know if that makes sense to do it in chapters and then put them together as a feature. Or... No, actually, I, yeah, you're right. I was thinking of doing that with, 
with the, that was like my unicorn trilogy. <laughs> yeah, and uh, the other the other thing that my other debate was always. I always wondered if people like characters just like that's just that happens to be like it doesn't matter like tell this story with all brand new characters or recurring it doesn't really matter um, about that a little bit um, I mean I, I kind of I use recurring characters but I kind of use them as ca like side characters or cameos a lot of times so, yeah so many would. debates that go, go on in your head. Yeah, it would be interesting. And like you said, because when I mentioned the, the thing about some of the music that you sprinkled in, I don't know how many people would notice that, but um, like your hardcore fans might, you know, just if you did just take some kind of background character and then just make, make a short featuring that person. I, I don't know. Have you done that before? Or is that kind of what you're thinking of? Or Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, I've done that. Um... Let's see, what's a good example? Well, Freak Daddy is a really good example of that. Freak Daddy first appeared in a cameo in a cartoon I did called um, It was a, He was a homeless guy on the bus, and he was talking all crazy. He appeared in another cartoon as another uh, cameo. Hero alpha nerd guy. Yeah, that's a good I made a full-on full on cartoon with Freak Daddy. So that's a perfect example of a side character that I turned into a, a main character for something. So, so with that one in particular, because we, we see first him as a homeless guy, was the whole fact that he was this DJ and everything that kind of fell from grace, was that, was that in your mind when you made him the, when he was first the homeless guy? Or did you just say, this guy's got a story behind him, I want to flesh it out. Oh, he's a DJ. And... Okay. The second one, yes, okay. exactly. Uh -huh. Well, yeah. you know what's funny though, in his, I just watched this the other day. First appearance in DJ Disrespect, um, Freak Daddy says something about, "Oh, I used to be a DJ." Yeah. I used to lay back in the cut. I don't know what he says. He says something like that, but um, from the get go, I knew story. He must have been a DJ in the, in the past, but um, and I kind of thought to myself, okay, I could probably get to his story. That's and when I'd be really easy to tell. In fact, I didn't storyboard Freak Daddy at all, um, at all. I just, in fact, a lot of times, Freak Daddy, the characters you see there are the first time I'm ever drawing them. Like I didn't do sketches for the most part. I might have done a couple of Freak Daddy. Other characters was the first time in that movie called The Funktasmic Five, and that was another excuse for me to do Freak Daddy because I wanted to do a cartoon featuring that group, and and I hope to do more in the future. But, so, I, go ahead. Sorry, Josh. So, with the boarding, I think that's interesting because, like, you were mentioning. Um, I think when we were talking on the phone, you were, you were mentioning that like you don't board a lot of. Or hadn't boarded a lot of your stuff, like you just kind of wing it, or make it as is. Um, um, is I've that done, like I've done? Is that starting to? Are you starting to board more now, or? I've done it every of of, of methods because I've I've done where I've completely storyboarded stuff. I've done where I've scripted stuff. I've done where I've done nothing, no planning, just made it up as I went along. Most part, what I do is I will usually draw some kind of thumbnails, sketches here and there. I should do more. It makes the creation of the of the of the story easier for me when I do these little thumbnails. Yeah. But uh, can you hear me okay? By the way. Yes. Okay. Um, but uh, so I, I do, I do thumbnails, and then I, I'll do a, a real. If I'm working with other people, which I like to, I'll do. I'll send them the lines, their lines, and then I'll just give them direction. Um, working by myself, I don't write a script at all. I just write little notes of things to say, 
usually underneath the thumbnails. But uh, but I, I for myself, it makes no sense to write a full script. Yeah. Because I already know where I'm going with it. But when I'm working with other people, I definitely need to have something on paper that they can work or an idea at least to guide them. So are, so when you're thumbnailing like a an animation, do you do like keyframes? Do you do like like how much do you draw before you kind of jump in? Like do you figure out your all your environments? Uh, um boy. It's a good question. I'm working on one right now, and I have an idea in my head certain scenes, the environments to look like that um, it's difficult sometimes because I'm like in my head I could see it, but I can't translate it to paper. I have reference, which I like to do. Uh, it's a lot easier. But better, but yeah. Sometimes I, I paint myself into a corner, or I draw myself into a corner. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it, it 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 all depends on right now. Like I'm in the corner right now, literally in the corner right now. <laughs> and and another thing, I thought I would like with. This show, actors, I always thought, oh, it'd be so much fun to draw and and talk at the same time. But I'm realizing, no, I can't even walk and chew gum at the same time. So it's <laughs> Yeah, it's, it, it's kind of a weird thing, drawing and, and talking. I still actually kind of um, struggle with that like when we do art casters like if, I'm, if I really zone in on a part of my drawing I'm like I kind of become terrible <laughs> at keeping the conversation going. Um, I'm no Bob Ross. Yeah that, that who is really I mean Bob Ross you know. Right now I'm painting on half Bob Ross. Uh, yeah. Um, um, have you ever thought about doing like a Bob Ross style character? For like, like, I have one. I haven't used them yet, though. Yeah. Uh, um, and I actually have another. Here's an exclusive for you. Another character that hopefully I'm going to be using in one of the movies coming up soon. Um, his name is Keith Keith Latigre. <laughs> He's a painter. He's an artist, a famous artist. Oh man. <laughs> Obviously, a reference to the actually, to the '80s clothing line. <laughs> <laughs> and he actually, Keith the Tigre is the artist that painted the uh, Tiger Lady, is from my Instagram icon or whatever. And I have a whole story written. I, by the way, I keep getting up because I'm letting the goddamn cat in the house, and mm -hmm. then letting them out, and letting them in. I mean, she wants to do a cameo. Anyways, um, yeah, I have a whole story built around Keith the Tigre that I hope to tell. Any that I hope to get to. Cat's messing with me. Um, <laughs> but uh, that's the thing, man. I, I, it, it's, it's a balance between old ideas that I've had for a long time that I need to get to. And then brand new ideas that just pop in. It's like they're all battling each other. And then short ideas versus long ideas. So it's a fun battle, but it's definitely a battle. It's all about time yeah, management. That's, yeah, that's to me like that's that's something really weird about the longer we get in art. It's like the old battle used to be like I have time and I don't know what to do. What should I draw, you know, or what am I going to write? And then you get, it gets later and later into your artistic career and you just, it, it becomes more of a struggle of like, man, I, I actually need the time. Um, so, I don't know, I think like with the, with the audio cutting out and all of that, like I think we might want to like, I mean, we've gone about an hour. Am I wrong? Did we do about an hour? Yeah. 
We've probably done like an hour, but there's probably like four minutes of usable audio. <laughs> yeah. But, Unfortunately, um, we can't edit this. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I do want to say like thanks to Jim for showing up, and uh, we'll have to do this again, like you know, with a more on-point audio, so we can be a little better with you as well. Because a lot of the time, we're like I'm picking between words <laughs> to to try to figure out what to what to um, how to respond or, or what to talk to. Uh, yeah, I definitely like to have Jim back on again because I there's a bunch of stuff that I wanted to touch on that just because the audio issues can't really do it. But yeah, things like I'm just curious, like moving forward, because there's so many of these channels and like things like Netflix and all these other channels and everyone's trying to do their own streaming thing. It seems like there's there's so many people looking for content. I'm just wondering if there's something out there that you know, would be perfect for Jim and if he's looked at any of that, but you know, but we can kind of tease that as something we can talk about in another episode, I think. All right, yeah. absolutely. Absolutely, and this was all an excuse for me to meet Scott. So. <laughs> evidently we've been like, well I've been following him forever, but evidently we were, we were friends on Facebook and I didn't even like know it, so. Um, but yeah, it's, it was really cool to get to talk to you, so. But yeah, I'm sort of a fan, so. Well, thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. I much appreciate it. And yeah, so we'll we'll do this again with better technical skills. Yeah, for sure. And for those of you watching, uh, thank you for trooping it out. And like, check out Jim's work. It's amazing. Um, and be that extra few subscribers to get him to a thousand. Um, all right. Well, yeah. So, uh, Jim, like one last time, where can everybody find your stuff? Like, which YouTube channel should they go to? It's also in the link. Go to Jim Luhan is the YouTube channel. Just all one word, I think. And um, I'm not a robot, contrary to my voice on this podcast. And then Scott, um, well, actually, I guess I should say, you can find me here at my channel, and then Scott will tell you how to uh, subscribe. So, Scott? Yeah, so you can find me, again, the, my information's right here, CircWorks, uh, CircWorks Art Labs on YouTube. It's basically CircWorks anywhere, kind of on the internet. Um, and so, like Josh said in the beginning, if you were around for that, uh, we switch back and forth between Josh's channel and my channel. So if you want to know where we're going to be from week to week, um, you might want to set up, sign up for a newsletter, and it's not – it's technically not really a newsletter because we don't really send out a bunch of information. We don't spam you or anything. We just try to send out like 20, 30 minutes in advance just to let you know where we're going to be, where the link's going to be at, um, and that's basically all we do. Because we sometimes we do it on Thursdays, sometimes we do it on Wednesdays, but just so you know exactly when and where we're going to do it, uh, there should be a link in the description of this video. Just click on that and uh, subscribe, and we will let you know. Nice. All right, and I guess that'll do it. So we will see you guys next week. Later, everyone.